everyone welcome to a new episode of angular anti-pattern today we're going to be talking about a very common anti-pattern among mid-level developers which is a stateful service so let me demonstrate it real quick so we have a uh, we have a library in which i created only one file called user service so user service is responsible to fetching the data from the users and then when you open it, it looks more or less like this. So let's start with the definition. We have a user model which contains an email and last login. This is a timestamp, epochtimestamp.com from the backend, for example. Then uh, we, for whatever reasons, maybe optimization, maybe, you know, um, could be related to abstraction layers. We want to have a state that contains that user you know a very common use case example would be hey let's use the um, state thing like a behavior subject or you could use ngrx or whatever but the idea is you don't want to repeat the calls to the back end so maybe you want to use that logic in many places could be you can use it in guard to protect your uh, routes that require a user to be present to be logged in um, or maybe you know you want to use it in a user component where you want to show a user detail for example uh, whatever reason you know but it's a very common case that you want to keep that state in the memory this is why you know angular is spa framework single page application so you know you can do things like this it can contain state so a very common example is to just put it in the user service but originally a user service was responsible to put uh, to make a login fun call so what it does is it calls the environment uh, you know user service base url and then v1 login and then provides with email and password and obviously because we are in angular world we must subscribe so once this is done uh, we need to set a user on the subject and now everyone who subscribed to this user observable uh, oh i need to write as observable so everyone who is subscribed to it will uh, get that user's recent data so now we can you know log out and look in another user and it will change all the subscribers without the need of reloading the page so it's all good all great um, except that it breaks a lot of principles so let me talk a little bit about that so that uh, we break breaking the layers you know um, the idea is that HTTP client is the means of your connection. So, you know, if I would like to replace HTTP client with something else, I will have to go ahead and turn that function into something different. Um, it's not going to be this client that post, but then you can see there are two really logics in this file. One is here, which is the typical infrastructure layer, and then one is here, which is a sort of a application layer but also we have a bit of an interface which represents a domain of our problem but nonetheless i mean let's consider two different layers one is the application because it reacts to when something happens update some something else and then we have an infrastructure layer which actually fetches the data and contact connects with the backend and then people a lot of time ask me is that really bad well it sort of shows you don't understand the fundamentals of uh, layers which means it's pretty fundamental topic actually so um yeah i think it, it's pretty bad from that perspective but then you can actually catch me doing the same uh why it's because i know what i'm doing uh it's not like i don't understand the pattern it's just that i prototype stuff so i just prototype it just to see you know play around with it and then give it to the user hands as soon as possible if that turns out to be a, a killer feature then i would refactor it to something more scalable so it's not necessarily bad from like maintainability point of view or if it's small that that's okay 
but you know when you need to add more things like register like uh, get list of all users or whatever you know this class will become pretty big pretty fast and then if you want to give more selectors it's also going to become pretty big pretty fast maybe you want to get an uh, observable saying is user logged in or maybe you want to uh, you know return only parts of the user right now the user only has email and last login but you can imagine it could have things like address it could have uh, you know my last orders or whatever you know so so the model can become pretty big pretty fast so that's the moment when i would say this is not okay and when you're in this stage yeah it's probably fine but in general it takes you maybe one minute two minutes to actually generate an extra abstraction layer here so if you say it's slower i wouldn't say so i mean think about it what is the one minute i'm gonna show you later one minute is mm, sip of a coffee and looking around in your office you know now or maybe a real quick answering the question when someone has i mean it's not even a chit chat length so <laughs> it's not an excuse right i mean if you know what you're doing you can do it almost the same time um, so that's one principle the other principle that it breaks is single responsibility principle single principle uh, single responsibility principle says well actually there is a bit of a interesting discussion about it because originally it said uh, a class or a function should do only one thing but one thing good and then it was misunderstood by a lot of developers because they would come in and create a function with only like classes with only one functions so they can say hey you know this is this it does only one thing so then uncle bob who originally recreated that uh, definition he said okay let's change that and then he changed that into something called a class should have only one reason to change and that's a lot better definition because uh, if you look at it how many reasons to change this class has well at least due to the layers it has two reasons to change one when we change the application logic and one when we change the infrastructure logic i can demonstrate that for you real quick for example um, let's say we have email and password and for whatever reason when we send that body here we don't want to send it like this uh, because i don't know maybe the backend made some change and they want us to send it uh, with uh, let's say a data attribute in here and then here they want to call it attributes this is actually a common json api formatting um, so now i come and uh, change the file uh, yeah change the file in the git when i want to make a git commit it's going to show me this file has changed so this is one reason to change that class another reason could be hey you know i get the last login but in fact it should be a date because we want to display it nicely or maybe we want to do easily comparison of string maybe we have a business logic and that's the third reason to change uh, let's say they want to say uh, they want to do a logic uh, in which we're gonna say let's say private redirect if older than a week you know maybe what we want to do in this function is to do the this router which i don't have obviously and then say okay if the router so the router says uh if last login is bigger than seven days then redirect to a special page in which we're gonna ask for more you know maybe turns and condition upgrade or whatever happens to do so the routing is a typical application logic law uh, uh, logic but it's also uh, it's based on the business change of the last login right on the business detail of the last login so in general i have already three or four or five even reasons to change that class and whenever i do that simple change i will see that file change and this class has already many reasons to change so that's not good enough so let me i will this is a really basic example so i will actually show you how to refactor that into something better it's pretty straightforward so the first thing that we want to do is to generate a, a new service and i'm gonna call it user state Uh, 
Well, it's because the uh, Angular schematics, it appends the service for me. This is not exactly what I really want to do. So let me remove the test because this is not a course on test. But I'm really big on test. Uh, you can see it in my other videos. And then let's call it user state. Yeah. Okay. So let's move that logic to the right place. So as I said, the user state will be the application logic. So all we have to do is to take this part of code and move it here. The same is with the interface user. We want to move it down. Cool. And then we also want to have a login function in here. But this login function will actually call the user service. It's called user service. And then we want to have email and password. I mean, we could create a, like a DTO object uh, that would contain both of them at the same time. I'm going to keep it simple. And actually, you see, it's been highlighting this for some time for me, but uh, let me show it to you. So here I need to do the change because obviously I don't have access to this uh, piece. So definitely I will not be returning a... Uh, mm, I'm, I'm not going to be setting that. I will, I'm going to be returning observable. And here comes the deal. Now, if you really understand the layers, you should not use the user service. It's because now... Uh, infrastructure will have a dependency on application that's not what you want to have well there are some cases with hexagonal architecture uh, which that would make sense but let's just keep a typical onion architecture here so in general uh, here is a bit of a, of a trick we're gonna talk about it just in a second but all you want to do is to return that observable yeah and then in here you want to do exactly the same as you did before, except that you want to call it on here. Sure, and that will work. Um, I know it's not maybe super visible, so let me make it in a new line. Yeah. Okay, so let's solve the mystery. So what should that be? Uh, what should be instead of the any? Well, there are many things to actually, you know, uh, go around it. You could technically do like this, but as I said, now we have a, a dependency pointing both ways. User state knows about the user service, which is pretty standard. And then user service also knows about the user state. The rule is also that the lower layers should not know about the upper layers. The upper layers can know about the lower, lower layers. So what can we do here? Well, we definitely don't want to return that user. We can return something that resembles that user very closely, but it should not be that user. So what we can do is we can create a new interface. And that's actually a pretty common thing. So let's say I want to have a, a user data because this is data access layer sorry it should be interface and then in here usually backend will return a lot more information than just these two so let's uh, let's go about it so what we want to do is we want to have a email string maybe we have things like a created add as well which is a number because we don't want to we cannot translate uh, transfer dates easily i mean we can transfer them as strings but then you have more work to do with the time zones and then last login and this is what the backend provides it provides these three maybe it provides more maybe it also provides an updated ad and whatever you know uh, maybe it also provides more information as i said uh, 
connected. Uh, you know, it provides things like um, address or whatever. Uh, but let's just keep it simple like this. And this is an infrastructure model. So this is what I want to do here. I want to return that model. And then in here I can say, yeah, it has this, uh, yeah. I, that's exactly what it trans. So now I have a database model, which is different than the domain model. Uh, look at this, uh, this email string last login, but it's a date. So what do I do? Well, I cannot just set it, right? Well, of course not. But what you can do is to set an object which resembles that interface. So an email will be user.email and then a uh, last login will be a new date uh, and then obviously it depends on the format you have and, and whatnot you could use moment library and stuff I believe there is a date that uh, what we can do is last login is now or we could do new date and then obviously we would need to set it based on the user last login I mean it would probably look exactly like this but you get the point I mean you would model that easily here um, and that's good and that's pretty cool now I have a difference between uh, my uh, domain model and the user model if I want to say if user was created sure I just come in and change my user state which contains that application logic I don't have to touch it uh, I don't have to touch the infrastructure layer if I want to change anything, I want to get back to what was before. Uh, uh, backend made up the mind that it was a not good idea. I come up and change only that file. Uh, now I can also reuse this. Oh, sorry. Uh, I can reuse this user service into another place, you know, uh, where I want to, because, you know, this could be a state that contains the list, but maybe I want to have a smart component that shows me, uh, maybe I want to add new functions like get all users. And then that service I can reuse in the user state where I get the, when I have a login logic, and I have also in another component when I can uh, have a list of the users presented. Um, so you see, by decoupling this, there is a lot of opportunities. You could see it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, we're talking one minute. So always try to do it. Always try to decouple the concerns and and, and separate them and then decouple the, 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 the functions. And one more thing I would love you to remember is the services must not have dependency on the states. That way you can build more scalable and more robust and easier maintainable code. So I hope you learned something. It was very quick, but I hope uh, it gave you some value. Thank you very much. Uh, Please follow me if you consider uh, that what I do brings you a lot of value. A lot of people do. So uh, thank you for your great comments and thank you uh, for being here until the end. By the, by the fact you're actually here and listen to me speaking right now, you're better than 90% of people who never really finish anything. So you're great. Keep doing a great work. Keep progressing. Keep uh, getting better. And, you know, things will open for you in the future. Have a nice day.